I want you to look very closely. There are people with children there. There are people with infants there. Completely peaceful. Absolutely peaceful. There was a lot of love in the air until they decided to show up. Let's continue. They took somebody down on the ground as we speak right now. You recording too? Yeah, I'm recording. Okay. okay. This is a violation of free speech rights. This is the police state that we were talking about. They're chanting, let him go. Yeah, they have a guy pinned down the ground right now as we speak. I'm live on Twitter right now. I was at the statewide Free Palestine rally on Saturday, May 11th. It was a huge and beautiful turnout until the cops showed up. There were families there, there were kids, there were infants there. It was a time. It was beautiful. We had an amazing time there. I would like to show you guys exactly what was going on. And, you know, the, the events that I got to see, um, you guys got to see some of it, you know, live. I streamed it live while I was there. Uh, so I'm just going to give a little bit of highlights into that, and then we'll get into what happened after that. So let me share my screen really quick. And here we go. So this goes on a while, but I'm just going to read the first few lines because they actually gave it to us in paper form. So it says, we, the Palestinians and the diaspora have come across from across Florida, but let it be clear, Palestine is our home. Gaza is our home. Yaffa is our home. Ramallah is our home. Haifa is our home. Al-Quds is our home. We will return from Turtle Island to Palestine. We will be free. Seven months ago, this, ra this rabid genocide and 40,000 Palestinians massacred by Israel, homes obliterated, families forcibly removed from their homes, children sole survivors. Our tax dollars fund this gradual ground invasion of Rafa, but the Palestinians of Gaza remain unshakable. Israel's settler colonial regime has systematically and barbarically attempted to ethnically cleanse Palestinians, but yet we are irremovable. Our souls and our hearts heavily worn, woven into the roots of our grandparents' delicate yet resilient olive trees. We breathe, we live, we breed, we resist until we return with our Cito's house keys. This Wednesday, May 15th, will mark 76 years of the ongoing Nakba. The Nakba never ended. That is tomorrow. It marks 76 years of this happening. It says Zionism, Zionism is the land theft, imprisonment, and mass incarceration of our beloved political prisoners. Sadistic rape, sadistic systemic starvation, occupation, and oppression of our Palestinian people. But this will be the final year we commemorate El Nakba. The Palestinians in Gaza and all over Palestine and the diaspora remain steadfast. Uh, Ad Samadine. 
from the international workers of that community to the student encampments, to our liberation movement, to the solidarity of our co-strugglers, we will not stop until total liberation. Israel, backed by the U.S. empire, attempts to sever generational bloodlines of the Palestinian diaspora, but we embody resiliency in honor of our collective commitment to the liberation of Palestinian people. Florida Pope Palestine organizations welcome you to the revolution, and we demand an immediate and everlasting ceasefire and to lift the 16 year siege on Gaza and to end this, the US war machine to stop arming Israel and to free all Palestinian prisoners and to end the 76 year illegal occupation. And we will return free Palestine. While Florida is one of the most racist states, it is both Democrats and Republicans on both sides of the aisle whose legacy is genocide. Genocide Joe will lose in November. And we, as the Florida contingent, vow to vote any genocidal supporter out of office. This means most Democrats and Republicans. There we go. We recommit to the liberation of Palestinian people and Florida elected officials must heed our demands of the Palestinian self-determination. And as we expand our collective Florida coalition, we must follow the lead of Palestinians. We move in principle. The Palestinian political prisoners are our North Star. We will actively decriminalize the resistance and we will align with the Palestinian liberation movement. We must unite on how we build collective power and unite together. Here are our demands. Number one, immediate ceasefire from Israel's genocide and complete liberation of Palestine from the river to the sea. This is number two, uh, Palestinians' right to return and self-determination. Number three, workers right here in Palestine and across the world have a right to resist by any means necessary. Number four, the ruling class and their systems will not protect us. They are meant to divide us. We demand an end to the repression by these institutions, corporations, and state policies. We protect us today and always. We care for each other. We stand for each other. We welcome our co-strugglers who stand with us today. Palestine will be free. Palestine will be free. Palestine will be free. That is what they were saying. And so I think it's important that we go over that because this is what they were uh, expressing. And one of the things that was also expressed at the beginning of this event was they said, do not engage with the cops. Do not engage with law enforcement. They said, do not taunt or say anything to them. Do not engage Zionists. Stay away from them. That's something as well that was deeply told to us. Do not do it. And we didn't. We stayed away from law enforcement and Zionists. But, of course, they had other plans. So I'm going to share, I'm trying to get to, hang on, I'm trying to get to my, um, yeah. All right. So I also uploaded and did, uh, okay. So let me share some of what I did. I went live on Twitter as well. So some of this, you, if you are not on Twitter, then you didn't get to see this part. Uh, so also, this is during the march. Let's go here. Now, can I change the camera? Oh, yes, I can. All right, everybody. Hello. Welcome to uh, this JB stream. Uh, just to let you guys know, I'm live at the Florida Palestine rally. If you guys can see, uh, we're here at Lake Eola Park. We're actually here. These are some indigenous uh, flags as well that are being displayed here. This is beautiful. It's a huge, huge turnout. This is going to be Florida wide that we are having this rally. I'm here with some members of the Orlando chapter of RBN. 
So we are also out here as well. Of course, free Palestine. Uh, this is absolutely necessary, especially with what's going on and the college campuses uh, around the world. Uh, I see somebody. Nelson. Hey, good to see you. Sorry, I saw someone. I'm on camera right now, but good to see you. Me too, man. We need to talk. Yeah, yeah. Are you okay? So if anybody remembers, uh, I had on Nelson Beckenport, he was part of the collective to introduce public banks. So he is trying to introduce public banks uh, in the county. Uh, and so I've had him on here before and it was great talking to him. I had him on a couple times. So it was great to see him out there as well. He's also an educator. So it was great to have him there. So let's continue. You'll be on camera? Sure. Oh yeah. yeah. Hey, I'm with Nelson Bedencourt. He's also doing some activism work for uh the yeah public banks for orange county so it's so good to see you out here as well i mean you're an educator so of course you're educated about the subjects and i'm so glad to see you out here it's good to see you and listen i just filed to run for public office with district three oh. county commissioner so remember me i'm with you with everybody in palestine oh man that's great I gotta have you back on. I'll email you too. Okay. All right. Good to see you, man. Okay. All right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that was Nelson Betancourt being there. That was that was wonderful. Uh, I also met uh, a viewer from PSL as well, uh, and he had some great things to say as well. Twitter right now, but but one of the things that you know, it's like it's important for me to be out here because as a black person, like we know what it's like to be oppressed. We see what Palestinian people are going through. We know what the indigenous people on Turtle Island went through. Like it, it is unacceptable. And so we gotta, we gotta band together, man. And, you know, against this white supremacy and Zionism and capitalism, it's just, it's, it's tearing us all apart. It's gonna kill us all if we don't stop it. So like, everybody here no matter who you are like i'm so happy i'm also especially happy to see a lot of white people because they're using their privilege you yeah, know for, for for a good thing too so. yeah i just want to introduce myself i'm with the security oh, so okay. i'll say okay. hi so you know who nah, we just got the planes closed so just, yeah. 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 all right cool yeah. nice to meet you all right yeah but but so why what's one of the reasons why you're out here too like why do you feel such an important mission to be out here oh yeah i mean for exactly the same you might reason. be an on camera no, no. okay i mean it's for exactly the same reasons that you were talking about it's, i feel like now more than ever it's vitally important to yes. like have solidarity with palestinians with the struggle and of course like making that international connection because like like imperialism and you know the colonial state that is israel is like directly tied to a capitalist state and it's all about kind of like recognizing the interconnectedness of all those struggles supporting each other in order to like get to some type of like revolutionary socialist because you know PSL state. Of course. So yeah, I, I feel like it's just really important to have like a physical presence for people to see that they aren't alone, to make connections like what's happening now. Mm -hmm. This is yeah, this work is invaluable. So I'm just uh, be one to live on the radar of all the different people that are out there. Yeah. Am I assuming correctly that you're part of the African diaspora? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So to, to, to the Black people, especially the people in the African diaspora who say, this is an issue that is, you know, far away in the Middle East. Why do we need to be involved in this? We mm -hmm. just need to, you know, keep hands off. What do you say to those of us who are in the diaspora who say things like that? Oh, well, I would just say all of our connect all of our struggles are interconnected and like one of the the biggest examples of that is like u.s police forces being trained by the idf for iowa yeah. and then like going getting that training coming back here using that same level of violence and all of how they've learned how to oppress Palestinians here and like it's the same thing it also connects into like military industrial complex with like like lots of these people develop these companies like Microsoft developing facial recognition technology, all these different ways to target Palestinians using U.S. tax dollars. They then sell that to Israel. They then use that violence on Palestinians using human bodies in order to like test them for things to make profit and then come back and sell.
place for probably U.S. Can you go find the Tampa comrades? Yeah, and like, uh, and then the U.S. police forces and use it on us. And like, there's nothing more symbolic than all the different cop cities that have popped up since George Floyd protests. And like George Floyd himself, using a knee on someone's neck is literally in the, the IOF textbook of how to just brutally put people down. So yeah. if they're so if you guys didn't hear exactly what he said was how the police are literally trained by IOF. So that's the Israeli, they call themselves the defense force, but it's really offensive. So the Israeli offensive forces that actually train our police here. And they train a lot of the police, like for instance, in the tactics that they use to murder George Floyd. So when we black people, especially those of us who are ADOS in this country, when we talk about combating Zionism, we're also talking about combating the police that actually abuse us here at home because it's all connected. That's exactly one of the reasons why it is important for those of us who are black. I don't care if you're from, if you're ADOS, I don't care if you're a black person that has uh, immigrant roots. I don't care. The, the point is, is that our liberation is tied to people in Palestine. So I think that's one of the things that's very important because somebody left up a comment on one of my videos and was like, we just need to focus on ourselves. This is focusing on ourselves. It is. It's focusing on ourselves while we can also focus on ourselves here. We can also focus on that over there too. We can walk and chew gum at the same time. We're black. <laughs> Let's continue. There's, there's nothing more blatant than that. It's like what we do domestically, like what we do internationally, and the connections that we have, they just don't stay there. That yes. fascism comes home. Absolutely. It, it beautifully said because ultimately, you know, what people like you and me, and I was saying this before, we know what it is like. And for instance, those police that are bashing our heads in. You know, and, and, and just make no mistake, those of us who are American descendants of slave, ADOS, our reparations checks are literally going to Zionist Israel. Yeah, that's why. You know, that, that's that's why reparations checks. Like, oh, $20 billion to, to, to... I meant 20 trillion. 20 trillion. To the wars in Iraq and Iran? Yeah. That $20 billion could have literally paid us reparations over 20 years. Yeah. And so for black people, especially ADOS or people who consider themselves FBA, it is important to, you know, be in solidarity with other people who are oppressed because what is the saying goes, none of us are free until we're all free. Exactly. It's just like a snake. If it, like if the snake bites you and bites you in your right hand, the poison just doesn't stop there. It spreads through your whole body. Beautiful. Beautiful. Look, I'm a fan of analogies. You just, <laughs> you beat me there. That was great. So thank you so very much to him for also being there as well. Uh, so yes, we, you know, uh, that was that part there. Some great conversations I had out there. And then here is this really quick. This is us marching. I wanna share this too. And then we'll get to what what happened after. So if you can see on the right, there are police lined up with their bikes parallel so that if in case we tried to leave, we couldn't even leave. So you have that there. And then, uh, let me see here. Was this, hang on. Oh, 
So we're not being allowed to turn to go around the lake at, here at Lake Eola in Orlando, Florida. The police have stopped us from going to the state. Uh, they're not allowing us from going around the lake. So now we have to do a full reversal because the police won't allow us to do it. We're not allowed to express our First Amendment rights. So yes, that's another thing that had happened. They literally stopped us from going around the lake. It's just one big circle. That's all we were going to do, I think, for the most part. It's just go around. We only got through, what, a, a third of the circle? We just went, boom, and then they stopped us there and then turned us around to go back the other way. So that's what they did. We couldn't even, we couldn't even actually fully march. Here as uh, protesters. I bet you if this was a pro-Israel rally, then they would have gotten the permits and they would have police allowing them to be able to do this. But because it's for Palestine, because it's for a, a oppressed and occupied people that are subjected to apartheid, they will not allow them. So this is what's going on right now. We were supposed to go into that direction and then they stopped us over there. And now we're going back the opposite way that we came. And so this is what's going on right now as we can speak. I'm going live as a precaution because we do not trust OPD. OPD is basically just like the IOF. They're trained by the IOF. In fact, what's shameful and the shameful part is that the OPD chief is half Palestinian. That's what is absolutely horrible. And the fact is that he's okay with free speech rights being uh, suppressed. So these uh, these law enforcement officers are here to protect capital. That's all they're here to protect. They're not. And so that's what happened there. Let me see. So yeah, uh, we you know I made sure to get as much as that as possible. Uh, so you have that there. Now let's get into what happened after. Once we got further down, this happened. So one of the things I want to emphasize first is they were denied a permit for any type of voice amplification. So because they were denied a permit for that, then we just had to use our voices as loud as we could. So we were loud, very loud. But then somebody bought in a bullhorn. And because somebody bought in a bullhorn, that's when the cops came in. Let's go. Police started tear gassing us. They came in and now they grabbed one of the, the people. As we speak right now, no! Oh, shit. I want you to look very closely. There are people with children there. There are people with infants there. Completely peaceful. Absolutely peaceful. There was a lot of love in the air until they decided to show up. Let's continue. They took somebody down on the ground as we speak right now. You're recording too? Yeah, okay. okay. This is a violation of free speech rights. 
This is the police state that we were talking about. They're chanting, let him go. Yeah, they have a guy pinned down the ground right now as we speak. I'm live on Twitter right now. Go, let them go. So, right here, they're literally carrying him by his legs and feet. Go, let them go. There are police with gas masks on now. So at this point, police started putting on gas masks with children in the crowd. This is the Orlando Police Department. So next time we'll bring on baby shampoo. He got mace. They had mace. Little kids were knocked down by police. Some of the mace, the, the, the wind blowing, got on kids. All because over a megaphone, over a bullhorn. And one of the people uh, who was part of who was part of keeping us protected at the protests, he was maced or pepper sprayed, I should say. And one of the Orlando chapter RBN members that was with me, she was one of the ones who helped clean out his eyes with saline because of the pepper spray that was put on him. And then we encountered a young lady that was pepper sprayed, that she had pepper spray all over her. And they had to clean out her eyes as well as, you know, help her get washed, get the pepper spray out of her hair, get her skin cleaned off because she had pepper spray all over her. It's terrible, man. This is what they do. All over a bullhorn being used? Make no mistake, this is why we talk about defunding the police. Because instead of actually going after people who are actually doing real crime, they want to pepper spray protesters over a bullhorn. These diseased pork chops decided to try to pepper spray people in front of little kids. So I'm going to share what happened afterwards as well. Hang on, let me see this. I think I had, I think I already uploaded that. Hang on, no. I couldn't upload that picture, but it's okay. Um, ah, here we go. Yep, I have it. So the two young men that were arrest, well, young people, I should say, were that were arrested. They were released yesterday. 
think it was yesterday morning, or was it Sunday, Sunday evening? I don't know. It's daylight. But it either had to be Sunday evening or yesterday morning. But they were released. And here we go. So this is from Florida Palestine Network. It says our brave comrades have been released. Thank you for your bravery and for putting your bodies on the line as we fight for free Palestine. Please donate to their support fund. So here they are. Yeah, we got you. We got you. Yeah. We are free, free Palestine, free Palestine, free free Palestine, free free Palestine, free 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 if they don't get no justice, then they don't get no peace. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, thankfully, uh, that's what happened. But yes, unfortunately, that's what happens whenever you try to express your free speech rights. And then the speech to lip for liberation is always stifled by means of an oppressive police state. And make no mistake, if this was a pro-Israel rally, I guarantee you, number one, the permit for voice amplification would have been granted. They probably would have been able to have a sound stage out there. They probably wouldn't have been able to have amps out there. But the moment somebody brings out a little bullhorn, then chaos ensues. And I am so glad that they are okay. Those young people are okay. Because it could have ended way worse, way worse. So this is why it is so important for us to make sure that we stay as safe as we possibly can whenever we are at these different functions, right? Um, also, one of the things I did was for this event, I called out Representative Maxwell Alejandro Frost multiple times. I called him out multiple times because he was not there. And then he had the nerve to express anger at OPD for how they treated us, and he was not there. You turn your back on the Palestinian people just to get in office. And then when your constituents, your constituents were pepper sprayed and unjustly taken in by police, you were near, nowhere to be found. And then you want to feign outrage? Oh, no, 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 no. You do not get that opportunity. You do not. You do not get to feign outrage when you should be out there standing with them. You said you would be there for them. And then you turn your back and started looking at scientists with hearts in your eyes instead. And now what? Now what? Look at how we're being treated. Look at how students across this country are being treated. All because they decided to express their First Amendment rights. You're part of the problem, Maxwell. You're part of the problem right now. You and the entire Democratic Party. You are just like the Republicans. No difference. This is why I say leave the duopoly now, because they don't care. They work for the people way up here who put themselves above you. That's who they are with. And they will use black faces in high places. My black people who are watching, a lot of y'all knew. Y'all came in here. Welcome. Do not depend on these black people, these black faces in the high places. They don't care about you when it comes to your public safety. 
They don't care about you when it comes to reparations. They don't care about you when it comes to, you know, increasing small businesses for yourselves. They don't care about you as workers. Women, they don't care about you. They, they, they look what they did with Roe v. Wade. They don't care about y'all. They told, they showed that to you back in 2008 when Barack Obama said, "Oh well, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna codify Roe v. Wade." Then a year later, what did he say? Well, that's not on my list of priorities. Women's rights are not on your list of priorities. What? Obama said that he had to look out for everybody. He couldn't even look out for his own people. So when it comes to all this, especially when it comes to politicians, especially when it comes to the duopoly, walk away. Walk away from the duopoly. Because in the end, they will sell you out for a bag of Doritos. I want to share this as well because I think this is important. Uh, hang on. So I'm going to share this picture. There's a lot of people. This is what happened Saturday. Here's one of the young people right here, way on kind of the bottom left. Here's people being sprayed with pepper spray on the right. Here's somebody down here on the ground. This is all here. And this was a public park, by the way. Public park. Let me see here. I think that's the same one. Yeah. Okay. And so when we talk about freeing Palestine, all of us are connected in this. Somebody also shared a video with me. They got a closer look. Let's take a look here. It was largely peaceful. It was peaceful until the cops showed up. I'm telling you. One of the chants that was oh, that was said was OPD, KKK, IDF, they're all the same.
So that's what we were around on Saturday. Can you imagine if I was closer to what happened? Can you imagine if I had gotten pepper sprayed or, or arrested? Especially being a disabled person on dialysis. It could have possibly even risked me not being able to get a transplant because the transplant team would have said, well, you were arrested by the police, which means that you're reckless with your life, which means that we disqualify you. I was not there to be violent. I was not there to cause disruption. I was there because it was peaceful. Everybody was there because it was peaceful. This is why people brought little infants and strollers out there. There were kids out there. There were disabled people out there. People wonder why we do not like the cops. So I'm gonna share this as well. If you guys can fill out this petition too, uh, that would be that would be perfect. That would be great. Um, hang on. I'll just share the link tree, but if you guys can, there is a petition as well. If you guys would like to, you guys can sign it. Let me share this because I was there and they handed this out. So, it says a uh, human megaphone speech, people's mic and then protest statement signed a Florida petition. So if you guys can sign that petition, it's the second one. It says general strike, know your rights, uh, protests and student encampments. Now you guys can also donate to Florida Palestine Network. If you guys would like to give them some assistance, especially when it comes to uh, the bail funds, that will definitely help them out. Uh, I have Palestine Chance, Florida Palestine Network. They also had the Bay Area Dream Defenders, Al Adwa, uh, uh, University of Florida Students Justice for Palestine, uh, Jacksonville Palestine Solidarity Network, 850 Dissenters, Real Orlando, uh, Central Florida Students for Justice for Palestine, and Donate the Gaza Relief Palestine Aid Society. So. That's why I put this link tree in here. So you guys have those links so that you can, if you guys wish, you guys can actually donate to help uh, the networks that are doing the work here, but also to help people in Palestine as well. I think that's deeply important. So you guys have that too. So thank you so much for any of you who have donated so far or intend to donate. So yes, that's what happened to me over the weekend. And I'm glad that uh, more people weren't harmed. <sighs> but we gotta keep talking. We cannot stop speaking out against what's going on. 
because it means the lives of so many people. 40,000? 40,000 dead in Gaza. We have to do something about it. And it requires not just mobilizing like in a protest, but organizing as well. Free Palestine. Thank you so very much for watching my channel, and I deeply appreciate it from the top and bottom of my heart. If you wish to support the channel further, so I can keep bringing you content that is educational and informative, you can become a patron on patreon.com forward slash jbfon. You can find that link in the pinned comment or in the description below. No matter what you give, you'll be supporting independent media and education that helps make the world better. Thank you so much, and you can watch more of my content here. Mwah. More head kisses, and have a beautiful day.